I still have um, a lot of students who are having trouble um, doing the roller coaster design project. So what I wanted to do is show you a demo video so you can see um, how to create a roller coaster and get the key properties you need for um, figuring out the roller coaster. So the first thing you need to do is have a rough sketch, essentially something that might look like this. Doesn't have to be too fancy. Uh, and then you need some key piece of information, so heights. So here, I'm going to make this roller coaster height 1 equal to, uh, let's say, it's 150 meters. We'll pick a position about halfway down. We'll call that 75 meters. And I'll pick a position at the top of the arc. I'm going to call that uh, 70 meters. Right. Now, for each of these positions, we'll call it position 1, 2, and 3. We need to calculate three things. We need to calculate the potential energy. We need to calculate the kinetic energy. And you need to calculate the velocity at that particular point. Now, these three things all are related together. So, the first thing we need to do is figure out the total amount of energy we have. So, at the top, the total amount of energy is just the potential energy because we don't have any um, motion So um, before it starts going down the ride. So, what we need to do is first uh, have some variables that we figured out in the beginning. So, let's say the mass of this roller coaster was 8,000 kilograms and uh, that's pretty much all you really need right because let's start with number one right so for number one we know potential energy at one is going to be mg delta h right and in this case our m is 8,000 kilograms g is 9.81 meters per second squared and our change in height in this case is a hundred and fifty meters now on the nice thing about number one is that there's no motion because we haven't gone down the hill yet so our kinetic energy is just zero joules and our velocity since velocity and kinetic energy are directly related the velocity is going to be also zero meters per second um, let's quickly resolve the. Let me find the resolve the. Let's see if I can move this thing over a little bit. So just so that we have this down uh, in a calculator. All right. So we say thousand times nine point eight one times one hundred and fifty me 11 million eleven million seven hundred seventy two thousand so this is equal to eleven million seven hundred and seventy two thousand joules now since this is our initial energy this also <clears throat> not only is it the potential energy at one, it's also the total energy we will have available for the ride. And this will become important later on. <clears throat> now let's look at the second one. Right, so the second one, we can say that um, for position two, right, potential energy again is nice and easy. Potential energy at two is just equal to mg delta h and in this case our change in height is from 0 to 75 so it's going to be uh, same thing 8,000 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared and the height in this case is going to be 75 meters throwing that into the calculator we find 8,000 times 9.81 <coughs> times 75 is going to be 5,886,000. 
So that equals. Sorry, give me a second. The tools are not working right. Here we go. Five million. Five million eight hundred and eighty-two thousand. I think. Let me double check that. Five million eight hundred eighty-six thousand. <clears throat> Now, once we know our second potential energy, right, we actually will know automatically know our kinetic energy at two, because this potential energy is less than the total energy we have in the system. So whatever is leftover energy um, has to be kinetic energy, right? Because there's no other place for it to go; it has to go to there. So our kinetic energy at two is going to be um, our total energy E total minus our potential energy at two. So in this case, our total energy was 11,772, 11,772,000 joules. And we subtract from it 5,886,000 joules. And it turns out that that is just half of what we started with. So we wind up with the same amount, <coughs> which is 5,886,000 joules. Uh, is our kinetic energy. Now that we know our kinetic energy at 2, if we're trying to find our velocity, we know V, or we know Ke at 2 is equal to 1 half mv2 squared. Right, we know that. And so what we can do is we can rearrange this a little bit uh, times 2 on both sides. We get 2 times Ke at 2 is equal to mv2 squared. Divide the m on both sides. Cancels the m. That will give us um, v2 squared is equal to 2Ke divided by m. And then to get rid of the square, we can square root both sides. So that gives us v2 is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. So in this case, let's just plug in the numbers. Right? We already figured those things out. So our v2 is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy, which in this case is 5,886,000 joules. And we divide that by the mass, which is 8,000 kilograms. Put in our calculator. Take that times 2. Equal to that. Divide it by 8,000. There's that. And it's the square root of this value. So thirty-eight point three six meters per second. So V two thirty-eight point six meters per second. So now we got one, we got two. Let's uh, neatly summarize some of this stuff. So for two, just so we have it on the right pack, two, our potential energy well, Two is equal to <clears throat> five eight eight six five eight eight six thousand joules. Our kinetic energy at two is equal to five eight eight six zero 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 joules. And in fact, this is the only case where they're the same, right? Do to half the 
starting height. And the velocity now at 2 is equal to 38.6 meters per second. All right. So lastly, we've got one, we've got two. The last piece of the puzzle is position three, which is important too, because we need to calculate if this is going to kill somebody or not. So let's get back to over here. All right. Uh, so at three, right, we know our potential energy at three is going to be mg delta h again. So in this case, it's equal to 8,000 kilograms. G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And our change in height now is from 0 to 70 meters. So 70 meters is that change in height. Now plugging that into our calculator, we get 8,000 times 9.81 times 70, 5,493,600, 5,493,600 joules. Now, <clears throat> the kinetic energy at this position is going to be the difference between potential energy at the top and the potential energy at this point because that missing energy between from here down to here is going to be the leftover kinetic energy that we have. So we can say the kinetic energy at 3 is going to be our total energy E total minus the potential energy at 3. Now in this case our total energy is the same we started with which is 11,772,000 joules. 1,773,000 uh, joules. 11,773,000 joules. <coughs> Minus potential energy at 3, which we just found out was 5,493,600 joules. leaving us with leftover kinetic energy for 3, which is going to be 11773000 minus 54936000. So we're left over 6 million. 6 million. 279,400 joules. 6,279,400 joules is our Ke at 3. And since we already derived this equation, <coughs> we can write that V3 is going to be um, the square root of 2 times our kinetic energy, which in this case is six two seven nine four zero zero joules divided by eight thousand kilograms throw that back in our calculator times that by two is that divided by eight thousand is that Square root, we find we have 39.62 meters per second. So V3 is equal to 39.62 meters per second. And that's it. That's requirement five for the uh, roller coaster lab. So hopefully. That should help a couple of you that are still having problems figuring out the velocities and the kinetic energy. Um, if you needed to calculate if this is going to you know, kill somebody, we'd have to calculate our centripetal acceleration, which we know. Um, let's pick a reasonable value. Let's say the radius. So let's say here at position 3, right? 
this is the loop, right? Let's say our radius here, if this whole thing is 75, let's say the radius is about r is equal to, uh, let's say 30 meters, right? So to find that our centripetal acceleration, we'd say ac is v squared over r. So in this case, our v is 39.62 meters per second squared divided by 30 meters. Plugging into a calculator, we get that's the v squared. Divide that by 30, we get 52.32 meters per second squared. 52.32. 52.32 meters per second squared, which is Take that number, divide it by the acceleration to gravity, 9.81. It's like 5.3 g's, right? So that number is 5.3. 5. .3. Five. <clears throat> Five point three G's, right? So this is good, right? And I said anything under uh, six G's is okay. Although this is probably not going to be a very comfortable ride, um, it's it's fine for our purposes. So I hope this was helpful for some of you that are stuck, and uh, good luck.